Okay, this is a, an update um, regarding the simulation of console of a cantilever beam um, using uh, just the damping coefficient. And um, so I'm gonna share in my screen. Okay, so the, the geometry is very simple. This is just a cantilever beam that has um, 10 micrometers wide, um, is 100 micrometers long, and it is um, one micrometer in thickness. And um, so the mechanic, the material properties are polysilicon, and we are gonna use this density, 2320 uh, kilograms meter cube and 160 uh, gigapascals um, for, the, for the material. Now on solid mechanics, and uh, as we saw before, we're just gonna define everything as linear material. And I'm gonna use a fixed constraint on this base. And um, on the geometry, I add an extra point. Let's see, I'm adding an extra point on the tip. Um, such as when um, when I go solid mechanics and I do point load, I'm gonna do a point load of a force of one micronewton. So here in, in parameters, I have the sign, sorry, in variables, I have the sign define the input force as one micronewton. And uh, because usually these cantilevers has a mass, but I don't wanna mess up with the, uh, with adding another block here, I added a mass as a line. And this mass has a total uh, weight of uh, 1.45 times to the minus nine kilograms. This is the equivalent of having a block of polysilicon of 25 microns by 25 microns by one micrometer thick. So that's supposed to be um, a total weight on top of this one, okay? Um, the parameter, so if we do sorry, if we do the uh, stationary and and you do the calculations and in, and you calculate the stiffness of this beam and you calculate uh, what will be the moment of inertia of this beam based on this one, the analytical solution is going to yield that the displacement. Well, first of all, the stiffness of this beam, polysilicon beam, is going to be zero point four newtons per meter. Um, uh, please relate to the Excel file that I'm attaching. Uh, to this um, to this video, um, such as you can you can do the calculations yourself. It's 0.4 newtons per meter of the stiffness, and I am adding um, well the mass. Uh, if we calculate the deflection, um, the analytical solution for the deflection of a cantilever beam with a point mass uh, with a point force uh, on the tip um, is going to yield that is. Uh, 2.5 micrometers. So if we do the stationary solution for this simple beam, um, the solution yields like 2.5 or something like that. So the, the analytical solution agrees with the with the simulation. Um, the, if we do the deflection, the, the, the beam is gonna look like this. So at this point, we had a, a, an agreement. Um, okay. If we don't, we calculate the, the, the resonance frequency, the resonance frequency for a cantilever beam should be the square root of the stiffness divided by the mass. Um, so 0.4 divided by the mass, the total mass that we used in this case was 1.45 times to the minus nine, as I mentioned. This is the, the added mass that we add here, 1.45 times to the minus nine. Um, the resonance frequency should be um, around 2.64 kilohertz, okay? Um, but the big question is, well, if we do a frequency sweep, will that, will that frequency sweep um, needs to consider um, the, the damping factor? So how to add the damping factor? The way that we add the damping factor, and I'm going to add um, some help here from uh, console. So if we add the help here, we're gonna have a menu that is directly related with, um, with the value that we're gonna add. Um, 
So sometimes for some computers, it takes a while. Um, I go to linear elastic, I right click and I do damping. I add the damping here. So I already add the damping here. Oh, sorry. I already add the damping here. And if we check this help from the damping, there are several damping factors that you can use. The most common one sometimes is the viscous damping. Um, it is related to the analyzing the material as the viscosity. But I, I do prefer to use this right leg damping because this right leg damping um, it basically said that it is a factor of the theta. Uh, being the theta of the system, um, the damping rate, the damping ratio of the uh, of a mass spring damper system. So, and the damping is is a factor of the mass. It has two portions. One is the alpha that is related with the mass, and the beta that is related with the stiffness of the material. So. Um, if we saw the equation, well, the one that we want is the linear factor, and the linear factor is going to be related with the uh, mass damping uh, mass damping parameter. So right now I'm using the stiffness parameter as zero, and I'm using the the mass damping as alpha. And I'm I previously calculated, and that's everything on the on the console situation. Uh, I calculate what will be that um, mass damping parameter um, for the case that is oscillatory, that is overdamp, critically damp, and underdamp. So in theory, if the beam has, has no damping at all, the time response is going to be an oscillation because there is no energy losses on the system. So, so if, if you just put a, 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 an extra weight on top and, um, and there is no damping, the system is going to continuously oscillate. So I'm going to consider this mass damping as zero. That's one of the cases that I'm going to evaluate. And I'm going to evaluate, I create a parameter and I call alpha, and I evaluate the critical damping. So the critical damping, I calculated backstage, and it's 2.65 times to the eight. Uh, that's going to be a critical damp system. Everything below that one is going to be... Uh, Overdamp. Everything higher than that is going to be an underdamp system. So I did multiple parametric solutions, and I'm going to upload that one. So I make a parametric solution of alpha of zero, two times sixty-six times to the eight times to the seven and times to the nine. So that's going to be critical less. I mean, critical underdamp and overdamp, and and zero is going to be oscillatory, and and I did a frequency domain response. And the physical and the, and the range that I use, you go here and use logarithmic is between one hertz and one hundred kilohertz with ten steps per decade. And and I also add another study that it was time dependent. And this is from zero to three milliseconds with 0 0.001 seconds. So the thing is that we know that this system, I mean, this beam should oscillate at two point six kilohertz. So that's why I, I try to simulate a little bit farther, 100 uh, kilohertz and a little bit less than 100 kilohertz. And one over 100 kilohertz, well, the range is in the 300 microseconds, something like that. So if we simulate my milliseconds, if we simulate three milliseconds um, every 10, milli 10 microns, you're going to have a pretty nice uh, pre uh, time response. So here are the results for the time response. So first of all, I'm gonna do the time response. Oh, see, I'm gonna remove this one. And as predicted, if my damping coefficient or my uh, mass damping parameter, sorry, is equal to zero, so now the circuits oscillate. There is no losses on the system. But if I use if I use under damp, it's two two times uh, two point sixty six times to the seven. Now the system is um, is under damp. A critically damp is going to be the green, and over damp is going to be the tile, the tile color. Okay, so this is a good agreement with the theory, and the time the, the time response matches what it was expected. And now we do a frequency response. I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this uh, time response. Okay, and uh, for the frequency response, 
I'm gonna have a um you observe it's gonna it's gonna look like crazy at the beginning, but you observe that there is a huge peak here with 150 micrometers of deflection. Well, this is the case where the, there is no damping and it's almost resonance. Um, in, a, in a perfect system, when it hits resonance, the amplitude it should be almost infinite. infinite. Um, so we can verify that the simulation goes at 2.6 kilohertz. Uh, it's relatively very well matched with the, with the equation that we have. Um, but that's not real. I mean, that case doesn't exist because there is no perfect perfect system. So um, I'm going to do a zoom in on this on this area, and you will see the frequency the frequency response that we should get. So underdamp system, the underdamp has an overshoot here in frequency. It has a little amplitude of up up to three microns. Except from that, it's going to be oscillating in two point five microns. Um, uh, we are not going to evaluate on this simulation the, the 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 phase response. So this is related with that phase response. Um, but this is the case that we are trying to analyze. And we have the overdamp system, the, on, uh, the underdamp and the overdamp system, where, of course, the, the resonance frequency is going to start shifting um, based on those parameters. And um, but also the decay uh, is going to be higher than 20, the, the 20 dB. Um, so again, we do have a very good agreement with the analytical solution for a single beam. That's the simplest way to calculate it. And this is, and, and please verify your console simulations with the Excel file that I'm providing that uh, contains all the calculations. We're going to cover this on class and, and, and make a nice chapter out of this. Thank you very much.